children and welcome back to our online Sunday school class. I hope each one of you is safe and healthy. It's a joy to have you back. If you remember, we started reflecting on the passion, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the previous lesson, we looked at how Jesus anticipated his passion and death at the Last Supper. Let's now look at what happens next in Jesus' passion narrative. Before we begin, I want to give you a small task. The task is of suggesting a punishment for the defaulters in each of the following stories. Edward belongs to the blue house in his class. All the houses have been asked to collect old newspapers and magazines. The group that gets the most will be given a prize. Tickets for a movie. Edward knows that an old lady down the lane has a large amount of newspapers and magazines in her house and she will be willing to part with them. But instead of telling his own houseboys about it, he tells William, his friend, who belongs to the Red House. Those boys get all the newspapers and magazines and win the prize. Time to think. If you belonged to the blue house, what sort of punishment would you give Edward? Could Edward rightly be called a traitor who betrayed his house? Now, let's look at our second story. Bill and John are two best friends. They are rarely apart. Whenever anything good happens to either of them, they share it with each other. Whenever anything bad happens to either of them, they want to talk about it to one another before telling anyone else. They both think they are good, reliable friends to each other. But one day, a gang of bullies lays their hand on Bill as he was going home from school. John, his best friend, came out later and saw what was happening, but kept out of sight. One of the bullies called out to him, You are one of your, his friends, aren't you? Come on, let's see what you are made of. But John ran as fast as he could, shouting, no, I don't know him. He let Bill down. He denied him. Time to think. If you were Bill and John was your friend, how would you feel? What would you do? Now, let's draw a connection between both these stories. Is Edward, who betrayed his group in the first story, more at fault than John, who denied his friend in the second story? What do you think? Having clearly understood the difference between betrayal and denial, let's reflect on a similar experience that happened in Jesus' life. Precisely when Jesus needed his disciples the most in his difficult moments, Jesus' friends decided to abandon him. 
Let's look at the events in Gethsemane. The first one, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. I am the one he looks to first. Tell him, Simon Peter, Jesus speaks to me like a father to <laughs> You're a son. You're both wrong. I am the one Jesus favors. <laughs> Simon Peter, how can you say that? What makes you think you are that important to Jesus? <laughs> In this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people. Yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you, and even to die with you. Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. The second event, Jesus prays. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. event, the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? So you're the one! I am he. We won't let them take you. Put your sword back into its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? But my Lord... Permit even this. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. And finally, the fourth event. Peter denies Jesus. What do you think Caiaphas will do with this Jesus of Nazareth? Oh, he will get his due, along with all his followers. You were one of those with Jesus the Galilean. A 
I don't know what you're talking about. This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. I swear I don't even know the man. You must be one of them. You can tell by your Galilean accent. A curse on me if I'm lying! I don't know the man! tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. reflected on the events that took place in and around the Garden of Gethsemane, let's draw our attention to the following points. The agony was one of the most difficult moments in the life of Jesus. Somehow, Jesus foresaw that his clash with the religious leaders of his time was coming to a climax and that he would have to pay for it with his life. The tension was compounded by his sensing that Judas, one of his own disciples, was going to betray him. Peter was going to deny him and his disciples were about to leave him. He probably felt so alone in this difficult moment. Even in such difficult moments, Jesus' greatest desire was to do his Father's will. In this itself lies Jesus' greatness. Even though he knew that the end of the road was giving up his own life, he still accepts his Father's will. This is very strongly brought about in Jesus' prayer in the garden and the way in which he tells his disciples not to defend him against the mob. Now that we have journeyed with Jesus through the garden of Gethsemane and reflected on all the events that took place in Jesus' life, I now give you a chance to enter into this event in Jesus' life a little more deeply. Even today, on the Mount of Olives, there is a garden with a few olive trees where tourists pay a visit. If you were to guide the tourists in the garden, how would you describe to them the agony and arrest of Jesus? I want you to think about it. I am sure you will include details about how Jesus was so heartbroken when he was denied and betrayed. How he prayed.
that we have journeyed with Jesus through his passion by reflecting on the events in Gethsemane, I now request you to take a comfortable posture. Let us quieten ourselves. Let's gently close our eyes. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. I ask you to gently open your eyes as I read God's word. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want you to imagine that you are in the garden with Jesus while he is praying. Would you also fall asleep like the disciples? Or would you be awake? Silence yourself and hear Jesus repeat again and again. Abba, Father, Remove this cup of suffering from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. We all will agree that Jesus is struggling to do the Father's will. If you were with Jesus, how would you encourage Jesus to go further? Having thought about our replies, let's say this prayer together for God's will to reign in our lives. You can say the prayer with me. Lord God, you have taught us that you have a plan for each one of us. Your hand guides our steps and provides us with all we need. Because you are good, you want only the best for us. Good and gracious God, I ask that your pathway will become manifest in my life. Help me to walk in the paths that you have laid out in front of me and lead me through the narrow gate. Amen. I now ask you to open your books and draw a rough sketch of a garden. This garden signifies the Mount of Olives where all these events took place. I want you to make a signboard for all the tourists that come to visit the site of Jesus' agony. The signboard could look like this, titled The Garden of Gethsemane. I want you to fill in the blanks now that you have experienced all the events that took place in the garden. Here is my reply. 
the garden of gethsemane in this garden jesus who was god chose to suffer and give his life for us i'm sure each one of you as well has come out with innovative replies for the sign board we have seen the events that took place in the garden of gethsemane and how jesus's agony and betrayal unfolded throughout all this jesus's prayer was lord not my will but your will be done as we come to the end of the class let our prayer to be not my will lord but your will be done in our lives